Okay guys, uh, let's look at this vocabulary. There are just five words. We need this vocabulary to solve our, the new words in the exercise. Aim. Aim. Let's check our pronunciations, yeah? Aim. Beat. Hit. Land. Score. Score, okay? Don't forget to check your pronunciation. It's very, very important. Let's look at the meanings. To aim is to point onto something. To point, okay? To point onto something. For example, you guys are looking at me and if I try to shoot something towards you, it means I'm aiming at you, okay? Also, it can mean a purpose. Your goal, your target, your purpose in life. It can mean an aim. What you want to be in life, what you want to achieve, it is your aim, okay? Two, beat. To beat is to strike an object again and again. Uh, I think you know what strike means? To strike something again and again, okay? We say beat. Also, beat has another meaning, uh, to win over something, okay? When, when we say, for example, uh, Gatasaray beat Fenet, it means Gatasaray won Fenet, okay? Hit. To hit is to strike with your hand. Like, look at my hand. When I hit something with your hand or a tool. A tool could be an equipment, like a bat, you know? A table tennis bat. We use it to hit the ball. We, we, we say hit. Land. Land is the earth's surface, the surface of the earth, you know, where all buildings are, where all cars park, that is land, ground, surface. That is the noun. As a verb, to land is to touch the ground, to reach the ground. When I say the ball landed on the ground, the plane landed on the ground, it touched, it touched the ground, yeah, it touched down, that is land. Then five, score. To score, score has two meanings as well. One is to gain a point. When, for example, uh, a basketballer or footballer uh, scores a point, we say to score. Or score can also mean a goal or a point in a competition or game like oh how many scores two zero this is a score okay this is a score thank you let's turn back to our exercise okay. let's find the answers to these gaps okay let's try to find the answers aim beat hit land and score number one in baseball we blah 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 the ball with a bat is it aim beat hit land or score I think you guys know baseball. You sit somewhere and you, you have to wait, yeah? So, could it be beat, hit, land, or score? You have two seconds to think. Okay, we aim, okay? In baseball, we aim the ball with a bar, yeah? You have to aim, okay? It's, it's your aim. Two, how? How did that ball dash? in our garden. How did that ball dash in our garden? Aim is gone. Let's choose from the, the rest. Could it be hit or land? Okay. How did that ball land in our garden? How did it come from wherever it came to and land in our garden? Okay. Three, it will be easy for her to dash the other competitors. It will be easy for her to dash the other competitors. Is it beat, hit, or score? Okay. Beat, okay? It will be easy for her to beat the other competitors. Four, can you dash at the star with your telescope? Can you dash at the star with your telescope? 
a telescope, I think, you know, it's an equipment, okay? Could it be heat or score? A telescope. Okay. Can you heat at the star with your telescope? Yeah, like you try to heat. Five, how many goals did he score? Obviously, it is score. And he is all with our exercise in this unit, unit four. Unit nine, exercise four. Okay. Uh, now, we have phrasal verbs here. Here are a list of phrasal verbs. Don't forget phrasal verbs have uh, an extension to them. Catch is a verb on its own. Drop, kick, work, okay? Uh, but when you add something, when you add something, they become phrases. Catch up with, drop out of, kick off, warm up, work out. Now, what could you think are, are the, it could be the right answers to these phrasal verbs in this section? Let's read number one, A, do exercise often at the gym, B, stop doing a sport or activity, C, start, D, reach someone who is ahead. Ahead means in front, okay, someone in front. E, do gentle exercise just before doing a sport. Gentle means to do something uh, Something simple, something not so uh, intense, something simple. To do simple exercise before doing a sport, okay? Something easy. All right, catch up with. When I say I'm gonna catch up with my friend, what could it mean? What could it mean? Do exercise. Stop doing a sport, start, reach someone who is ahead, or do gentle exercise just before doing a sport. Yes, okay. Like you are running and oh, I'm gonna catch up with you. It means I'm gonna find you, I'm gonna reach you, I'm gonna be at the same level. Two, drop out of. Drop out of. Don't forget our topic is extreme sports. So we are using this in relation to this. What is to drop out of? Is it to start? No, obviously. Do exercise? No. What could it be? This or this? To stop doing something, okay? When I say, I dropped out of the basketball team, it means I left basketball, I'm not doing basketball anymore. Three, what is to kick off? To do exercise at the gym, do something gentle in form of exercise, or to start. I guess it's the easiest, yeah, to kick off is to start. When I say, we are kicking off school tomorrow. We are kicking, we are kicking off our uh, activity at two o'clock. It means we are starting, okay? Warm up, what is to warm up? Uh, we have only two options left. Do exercise or do gentle exercise just before doing a sport. What could it be? Yes, to warm up is to, before you, for example, uh, normally when our footballers are playing, before they go to the match, they do some training before the match started. This is called a warm, they are warming up, okay? They are getting ready. They're getting themselves ready. And work out is the last. Obviously, it is the last and the easiest. Work out. To do exercise at the gym or at any sports center. We say, I am doing a warm up. All right, next exercise. Uh, we're gonna complete the sentences with phrasal verbs below. Now, these verbs have been used before, so we're going to try to apply, use the phrasal verbs in these empty spaces, in these gaps, in these dashes, okay? Number one, it's important uh, to blah, blah, blah for a few minutes before you, the game starts. Guys, try to understand the meaning of the sentence before you put the word there, because the meaning of the sentence will help you, okay? Find the word easily. What are they trying to tell us? It's important to 
dash, dash, blah, 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 for a few minutes before the game starts. Is it this, this, this? What could it be? Workout? Before the game starts. Before the game starts. It is A, warm up, okay? Try to warm up before the game starts. Two, I never blah, blah, blah with him. He's going too fast. Could it be kick off, drop out of, catch up with, or walk out? Don't forget, he's going too fast. He's running too fast. He's walking too fast. So what can I, what can't I do? Is it catch up or kick off? Okay, I never catch up with him. He's going too fast. It means he's ahead of me. He's in front of me and I can't find him. You know, I have no hope. Three, the football match will blah, blah, blah at noon. Guys, what is noon? Do you remember? Noon means 12, 12 o'clock in the day. Okay, 12 p.m. The football match will, I think this is the easiest. What do you think it is? Drop out, kick off, or walk out? It will kick off, okay? It will start, in other words, it will start at 12 o'clock at noon. Four, Ellie had to, have to, had to, verb to. Ellie had to, blah, 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 of the, ra of the race because she had an accident. Accident. She had a problem, she had an accident. So what's the answer? Obviously, it is drop out because she had a problem, you know. She had to leave. She had to get out of the race, out of the uh, competition because she had a problem, which was the accident. Five, they blah, blah, blah for an hour every day before they go to work. Uh, what could it be? They walk out. You know? They do some sports every day before they go to school or before they go to their jobs. They do some work out. They do some sports. That is it for here. Thank you. Uh, let's continue. Now, uh, in the if clauses, the conditional clauses, second conditional. Uh, don't forget the second conditional. The if clause, we're using the past tense. And the main verb, we're using would and the infinitive. Infinitive means verb one, okay? Verb one, uh, an infinitive in the main verb, and our past tense, our past tense in the if clause, and would plus infinitive in uh, the main verb. Okay, let's start. If I have a chance, I love to go paragliding. What could this be? It should be past, what's the past? If I had a chance, I would love. Would plus verb one, which is love. I would love to go paragliding. Two, uh, if I have a lesson, the instructor tell me what to do. If I had, because it is past tense. If clause is past tense, the instructor would Tell me what to do, okay? It's the main clause. Three, if the equipment, A means a, B, yeah? If the equipment be good, I not be scared. What is the past tense of B? We have was and where. Uh, the equipment, he, she, he, it, was or where? If the equipment was good, it can be or was or were. Both of them are right, okay? But was is more common, okay? If the equipment was good, uh, it would, I wouldn't be scared. Wouldn't, because this is negative, okay? I wouldn't be scared. Next, six, if my friends see me, they don't believe their eyes. If my friends see me, they don't believe their eyes. See, what is the verb to of see? So, if my friends saw me, they wouldn't believe their eyes, or they would not believe their eyes. They would be surprised. They're not expecting me. 
uh, the, the ninth, if my parents find out, they be very angry. If my parents, what is the verb to, the past? If my parents found out, they would be very angry. Now, just one last example. Don't forget, like we said, if I had the chance, I would love to go paragliding. We're starting with the if clause. If we ever start with the main clause, could you think for two seconds? How could you phrase that with the main clause? If we start with I would love, how can it be the answer? Two seconds, three, four. Anyway, the answer would be I would love to go paragliding if I had the chance. In this situation, we don't use the comma. We just write the full sentence. Okay, let's go to our next activity. Uh, we're going to circle the correct words. We're going to choose which one is true, okay, according to the sentence, and which one is wrong. But we shall only circle what is right. Number one, of course, we're doing this according to uh, what we've just learned. We're talking about the second conditions. Number one, dad would go snorkeling if he has the chance. Don't forget the would. Could it be has or had? Obviously, it is had, yes. Okay. Dad would go snorkeling if he had the chance, okay? Eight, uh, activity eight. Dad would go snorkeling if he had the chance, okay? Had, because it is would go, had, past tense. Two, if he went kite surfing, he would will feel terrified. If he went, what could it be? He would feel or will feel. He would. It is second conditional. Past tense and would verb to infinitive. Three, if we are or were more adventurous, we would try kite surfing. Yes, what is this? If we were or are, don't forget, would try. Okay, if we were more adventurous, we would try kite surfing where with wood past tense four would you learn to scuba dive if you find or found a good instructor would you learn would learn okay because of the wood uh, second condition of five i would buy a telescope if i were you or if i are you if I were, R sounds incorrect. It sounds wrong, isn't it? Six, would they go skiing if they have or had skis? Because of the wood, we're choosing the had. Uh, next, and we're gonna finish, is the listening part. We're going to listen to this discussion about extreme sports and we're going to choose the correct answers, okay? We're going to choose either A or B. Let us start. Hello and welcome to the program Extreme Sports. And here with me in the studio are Julia Knowles, the Olympic swimming champion. Hello. And Dan Simpson, who's just written a book about his experiences as a climber. Hi. Well, Dan, why do people do extreme sports? Because they like a challenge. If you don't have challenges, life gets very boring. Yes, but I don't understand why some people enjoy risking their lives for fun. Actually, I don't think they really think about the danger. They enjoy doing something that not many other people have done. Yes, I agree. Extreme sports are like a test of strength. That's probably why it's usually men who do them. Because they want to show how powerful they are. Actually, more and more women are starting to take up dangerous sports, you know? Mm, you're right. 
And it also seems that new sports are being invented all the time, like kite surfing. Well, if I tried that, I'd probably break my arm or leg or something. Wouldn't you have to be very, very fit to do this sport? Yes, of course. What worries me is that anyone can try an activity like this, even if they aren't fit enough or strong enough. Hmm, you're right about that. That's why there are so many accidents. Another reason accidents happen is that, unfortunately, many people who organise these sports don't always follow all the health and safety rules. The equipment that you can rent isn't always as good as it should be. So, if you want to try an extreme sport, what should you do? Well, make sure that there is always a properly qualified instructor with you at all times. And, of course, don't take unnecessary risks. Well, we're running out of time now, so thanks to both. Alright guys, uh, that was a discussion between two people, the lady and the man, okay? I think it wasn't so hard. You just have to find out the answers. But if possible, in case you're stuck, pause and replay again so you can find the answer easily, okay? Now, let's start with number one. The guest on the program have A. Competed in the Olympics. B. Experience of the two different sports. Uh, what is your answer? Uh, is it A or B? It is A. They have competed in the Olympics. They have, they have been there. They know, you know. Two. What does Dan say about people who do extreme sports? What is the man? What did the man say about the people? Not the woman. What did he say about? A. Their lives are boring. B. They like testing their abilities. They want to test, okay? They want to taste what they can do, okay? They want to feel what they really can do or not. Three, what does Julia say about extreme sports? Julia is the woman, the lady. What is she saying about extreme sports? A, men are more interested in them than women. They have more interest. Or uh, new ones are coming out all the time. It is A, okay? Men have more interest. Four, what is true about kite surfing? You have to be very fit to do it. B, it doesn't need a lot of strength. Could this be true? No, it is A. You have to be fit, okay? You have to be really fit to do it. Five, Dan thinks beginners often have accidents because A, they don't listen to the instructors. They never listen. B, safety rules aren't followed. Could it be A or it's B? They don't listen to instructors. Safety rules aren't full is wrong because they don't listen to the instructors. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, I love you and take care of yourself, okay? This is all for now. Thank you so much.